Yo, what is up everybody? Today, we are now doing part 4 Fortifies and Raised Ichigo And pretty much the last time we got started this uh, Well, resumed this what if really uh, We ended as Ikaku and Ichigo are about to fight pretty much Ichigo just invaded Soul Society, right? And now he landed you know, and caused a crater and everything landed in the Serite, and now pretty much Yukaku and uh, Yumichika had came onto the scene and found him, and now he's pretty much fighting Ikaku while Ganju is fighting Yumichika, right? So, yeah, um, <laughs> I was really listening to the last part just like two minutes ago because I just wanted to refresh how it ended, and I literally said, like, peace out like three times. I don't. I don't know how that happened. That was just that was just something I should add upon. And pretty soon I shall be diversifying some of my what ifs in a way, like trying out new things in the story. And new what ifs, possibly. But yeah, uh, without further ado guys, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I do this every time. I keep saying starting instead of resuming. We are resuming this um, as each go would have his blade in his hand, right? Two hands around his um, suba, and he's he's uh, preparing for Ikaku to strike first. So Ikaku would get out the staff-like you know weapon, and each go would think at first it looks like a staff, but then he would see this sort of the splittings and the two parts meaning it's split so it was sort of it wasn't really a staff it was more like a spear right so he would you know Ikaku would charge him and you know, um he would uh, slash at Ichigo Ichigo would put up his arm and he would block it right and the other the staff would sort of split and the uh, sharp side would pretty much uh go to puncture his right arm but this sort of shield would appear by his arm and it would pretty much deflect it now uh, the shield is pretty much um the same shield that Aizen used during the Aronka arc in the end when Shrinsui went to go stab him and or not Shrinsui it was um Ichigo Ichigo uses gets a Tencho and the shield protected him because obviously uh, the neck is where the creature's weakest spot is pretty much and obviously Ichigo sort of improvised this and used it just anywhere everyone would, if anyone like had less riatsu it would just not penetrate and it would it would have to take a lot of riatsu okay like at least captain level so it, you know the blade would then deflect off of it and Ichigo would slice down his uh, sword, cutting his uh, shoulder. Pretty, it was it was not that deep, but um, it wasn't a shallow like cut either. Right, he was he was bleeding. Then Ichigo would kick him in the face, and then uh, obviously Kaku, he, he'd realize that Ichigo somehow saw his weapon and knew that move set. So he would try different angles, different attacks. You know, whatever he could, really just tried as much of his Anjutsu techniques that he knew. Since the Squad 11 uh, members didn't really use Keto. And obviously, I mean, he can't really use Shunpo that much. He's not like Soifan. So, I mean, they mostly really only know Zanjutsu out of the four Shinigami techniques. And it's realizing it's not working, right? And he realizes he needs to increase the force and, you know, increase his attacks by tenfold. And he knew exactly how to do that, right? 
and he asked if he should go if he can keep a secret you know make sure nobody tells of what happened and he nods his head right just really playing along i mean <laughs> what secrets would he have that are so important so he would put his uh, blade in front of him their spear really and he would go as bankai you know hazuki maru that is the name of his zanpakuto as you know there'd be this smoke this collecting of dust from his spiritual pressure as he would then be seen with these huge two like weapons and they were, they looked quite heavy and even though he's obviously he's holding them just fine and that would be his bankai right obviously to have the tenfold in ryatsu <laughs> obviously some characters don't receive the fold like you know shunsui only really gets hacks so he would start swinging wildly at ichigo and ichigo's keeping his distance backing up using the shield whenever he has to or his weapons to deflect it and it's growing quite hard i mean he's pushing it really so he would back up and whenever he would swing he would use getsuka tensho right and obviously hikaku would have to put up his weapons and deflect it right and as he does this ichigo would flash step behind him and slash him again on his other shoulder right about, about the same cut length and <clears throat> you know ikaku realizes he can't fall for that anymore right so he decides to only use one weapon to deflect the uh, attack while waiting right for ichigo to flash step behind him again and try to attack him and you know they're, they're both sort of adapting right and then ichigo's in shika ikaku's in bankai uh, i'd say this is pretty uh, a fair fight obviously not until Ichigo uses Bankai, but other than that, I mean, he's doing quite well for himself. So, Ichigo would start using Keto, right? Start mixing them up, right? So, he would then use Bakuto number 21, uh, basically smokescreen uh, technique, and then start using a bunch of techniques through the smoke, and sort of use that to um, silence his footsteps, like, they can't really cure him. So he would use like Raika Ho and uh, Auto number 54 and pretty much other techniques like that that distracted the opponent as he would flash step again and he would slash like pierce through his um, mid his midside on his uh, chest. Not really in any, uh, not where there's any organs. I mean, he doesn't really need to kill ikaku he has no reason to really it doesn't make sense obviously and he's not fighting him for actual pleasure because he's i mean he's just not that strong for ichigo at this point so it just doesn't make sense so as uh you know he just pierces uh, around his mid i'd say he's near his stomach right as he pierces right through and pretty much he just starts uh, obviously coughing up blood as he fell to the floor right he would reach over to his zanpakuto which had reverted to his shikai state as ichigo would see him using an ointment on his wounds and he would ask him uh what you know where is the uh the tower the repentance tower and obviously ikaku would point it out as uh being in the 13 court card offices and it's pretty noticeable it's the tallest out of all of the towers and each go and then you know run pretty much <laughs> go about his way in so as he would start flash stepping towards that direction there'd be a bunch of 11 squad members about 20 to 30 coming his way as you know he would cut them down and everything i mean that's not too much trouble you know or just use a get to get I mean, it's not really too much trouble for him. As he would make his way through the Serite, and he would obviously still meet Hanataro. And uh, he saw since Hanataro was from the 4th Division, he would be a pretty useful healer, or at least that's what he thought. Right? He doesn't know his actual seating. And he, obviously Hanataro was willing to go along, and he did help with Rukia. You know, not a pretty much guiding him to the repentance tower. Uh, at least a much better guide, pretty much. So 
they would make their way and use the sewers as they would um, be walking down the sewers. Obviously, Ichigo, Ganju, and Hanatsuro, as once they make it up and up, you know, they would see the stairs ahead of them. They would see Renji, uh, pretty much waiting. Right? Obviously, um, Ichigo had won that original encounter, so there was a little more confidence for Ichigo in this case. I mean, he knew he was stronger. Obviously, Renji was still five times stronger than he was in the world of living, so he still has somewhat advantage, right? So Ichigo would, you know, on with his katana. I don't know why I said katana. Um, Zanpakuto, as he would hold Zangetsu in his hands. As Renji would do the same. As they would start their fight, right? You know, Renji would run towards Ichigo slicing, you know, as he would be very quick to activate his Shikai. As his Shikai turned in, you know, obviously as we know, Sabi Maru. As he starts using it to have a longer reach with Ichigo, swinging it as it extended towards its area, hoping to cut him. Ichigo's doing quite alright, getting cut maybe here and there, but nothing too significant, and nothing too deep with the help of his Hieto. So, Ichigo started to notice a pattern with his techniques, like how long is the, you know, the time between each attack, right? And he would utilize that, right? So as Renji would throw, use the three represent, uh, repetitions of his attacks, he would retract his blade, in which Ichigo would f flash, you know, flash step towards him before raising his blade and completely cutting through him. Right? Obviously, Renji would put up his blade, but it would just, it would just slice right through, pretty much, as it would slice right through his shoulders, and it would go about four inches, like vertically down, and it was pretty deep. Right, as Renji would pretty much stagger back as Ichigo would get ready to, you know, stab him again. Right, as this time a little more, <laughs> not more fatal, but more fatal than the original, as he would go for the other. As Renji would try to do the same, obviously that was not helpful. That did not help at all, as he was then pierced again. So. Now, uh, Renji, obviously due to this loss of blood, he would be significantly weaker and he would just be fighting like wildly, like doing whatever, right? You know, he was quite injured uh, and obviously that, that's not helping too much, right? Ichigo would be easily dodging his attacks, right? As he would, you know, each time not even have to use his blade, just like kicking him or punching him really do the would do the job as he you know Renji would be on his back towards the wall as he realizes that he's just he lost really as he would explain to Ichigo of him and Rukia's backstory uh, 40 years ago when they were first uh, born in soul society as he would explain their you know childhood and how they joined the Serite or went to the Serite and joined the 13 court court, court court guard squads and pretty much all that right and Ichigo would sort of understand Rukia's backstory and obviously Renji's and realize and you know he has to save Rukia really or at least that's pretty much what Renji's telling him begging him to save Rukia and obviously Ichigo saving Rukia for a different reason well, not an entirely different reason. It doesn't just do it for the Hokyoku. I mean, you know, Rukia is still technically his friend. I mean, it's just he has a really small f group of friends. <laughs> and, I mean, he's he mostly is just polite uh, when it comes to people he's not friends with to keep up this persona, like a facade, really. And um, that's, that's just Michiko, really. And he would make his way up the stairs right as they would find another alleyway or not really alleyway but tunnel and they would rest there for the day really for the night i mean the next day they would uh, get out of the tunnel and they'd be running through the court quad squads cutting down 
as many Shinigami as they needed to. <laughs> when they were just about really close to Repentance Tower, in which they would feel this presence behind him as he feels Kenpachi Zaraki, the, the, I think he, the 11th Kenpachi. Obviously he learned about the Kenpachis being, obviously the, the only ones he knows is Unohana, um, uh, Asashira Soya, uh, Kriyashiki, and then obviously Kenpachi. He knows about the histories of all of the, um, you know, the Kenpachis. I mean, the only thing he really doesn't know is how uh, Kenpachi got a scar and how did Unohana got her scar. But other than that, that's pretty much it. He knows like most of the history of Soul Society. Uh, obviously, he literally was <laughs> raised by the smartest Bleach character in the series. Arguably, Urahara being the smartest. And if we're talking today, like like Hell Arc who's smarter it, it would be Aizen but obviously if we're talking a Ronkar arc obviously that'd go to Urhara so basically what would happen is he you know he would know of Kanpachi right he knows that he doesn't have a Shikai or Bankai so he wouldn't make much comments about uh you know you don't have a Shikai so you're not gonna get any stronger right so they would be both be ready to fight as Kanpachi he would notice his strength right notice he's also holding back especially against ikaku and you know ikaku would tell him he had a feeling he had bankai but he was in shikai the whole time right and renji you know he felt the spiritual pressure like not feel it like complexly like how some of the other captains do but like he definitely like he he knows it's there it's not like he's oblivious to it he feels the strength of it so um they would get ready to draw their swords as Kenpachi would swing, you know, would, uh, <laughs> I was going to say swing, but he would let Ichigo go for the strike, right? So Ichigo would pierce his chest pretty easily, I'd say. And later on, obviously, after he does that, I just... <laughs> my brain just kind of paused for a moment but as he pierces his chest it, it would go pretty deeply but nothing too uh deadly for Kenpachi to handle i mean this guy can, his durability is crazy he is he can take so many attacks it's 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 just a wonder really and you know Kenpachi, you use like he was kind of shocked how he, how he kind of managed to cut that deep but at the same time not that shocked more happy you know more joyful right as Kenpachi would would sort of smile i mean somebody actually managed to cut him that deep you know as ichigo would back up not even giving a chance not even giving Kenpachi a chance to swing his sword he would put up his hand and use hotto number 63 while using hotto number 54 to sort of mix that lightning and fire effect, the existence erasure effect, this would put a hole, like a hole through Kenpachi. Right? Ichigo knows he can like sort of go all out really. I mean he doesn't need to feel scared about killing Kenpachi because this is Kenpachi. I mean there's history reports about him fighting opponents and he would have like 10, 20 deadly wounds, I mean, during his fights and he would keep on going. He would then put his finger in the air and use Hotter number 90 with no incantation, but just as powerful as when he used it against the Grand Fisher. So, the purple box would surround him, cutting him deeply as, you know, obviously the wound is there, but he's smiling, right? Kenpachi knows that Ichigo is quite strong, maybe stronger than most of the captains, so... He rips off his uh, eye patch and they just start adapting right he starts adapting right starts swinging his sword with the yellow burst of riatsu coming from it and he goes blocking and swinging and deflecting and parrying as they cut each other pretty much mostly ichigo then kenpachi as you know kenpachi would notice a similar ability that he uses being the iron skin right obviously kenpachi uses a shinigami version of it but he notices that, right? As he would comment on it, right? As uh, he says, you know what? 
as they stop right they just, they're standing there he's like don't use any of that iron skin technique of yours i know i know you somehow have hollow abilities to be using yet or like that none of that right? just whoever survives this attack we're going to attack each other at the same time with their most powerful attack no defense only offense okay and whoever survives <laughs> wins the battle how about that and she would nod his head right as he would put up his blade infusing the getsuka's uh you know power zangetsu's power everything and he would go into his bankai right as we saw the basically the first bankai a little more developed than his um first more like his donkai really how the blade looks like and everything just not that not that um that's a sort of glove thing none of that really or that chain up his arm so he would be you know in his bankai and everything as he would start to put more pressure on the Getsuka. And you would notice it was sort of a reddish color uh, due to his accessing more of his, uh, due to him accessing more of his hollow abilities, it's more dark red and black compared to when he first used it against Byakia. It was more of a dark blue. So he would get ready, right? As Kenpachi would do the same. And you know, there'd be a hollow mask, you know, manifesting behind Ichigo, similar to how they clashed. This time, Ichigo would have a definitely more chance of surviving this attack. So he would complete, he would pierce through Kenpachi's chest and it would be definitely fatal for him, really. Though we don't really need, we can't have Kenpachi die. I mean, literally every time, it's like his, it's Koopa's favorite character to draw. Though I'm not doing it just because Koopa likes Kenpachi. We, obviously Kenpachi just really is adapting here. So he would be able to survive it. And he will, since Ichigo is technically only 10 times stronger, it's not like thousands of times stronger, he'd be able to survive it, realistically speaking. So as they would, you know, clash and Ichigo would win, right, he'd be standing over Kenpachi. Obviously, probably a little less injured, but pretty injured to say the least, right, as he would start to feel some of his wounds um, pretty much regenerating. Obviously, not all of them. It's sort of sim something similar to Okuyura's ability at this point. Obviously, like all wounds that aren't internal organs can heal, and that's just for the time being. Later on, it would be just like organ, like any cuts and burns, anything like that to the organs, just anywhere in the body. Though, would it mean actual immortality? Just the high speed regeneration. So he would then fall on his knees as obviously Yuruchi would appear again and they obviously he would be recuperating in the cave in which Urahara and Yuruichi built. So this is where I'll be leaving off part four. What if Aizen raised Ichigo? Just want to let you know a teaser. If you made it to the end of the video, I just uh, gonna do a teaser. You know, you deserve it. Uh, on the 31st, me and Roke we doing what if Deku was a Joker? Obviously, it's a Halloween special. That's just like a need. You gotta do that. What if? But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. And I uh, hope you have a great day. And peace out. And hopefully my peace out doesn't go like three times. Sorry. But anyway. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Uh,